The battle between organic and genetically modified GM crops is one of the most heated debates in agriculture. On one side, organic farming champions natural methods, banning synthetic pesticides and genetic engineering. On the other, biotech advocates argue that GM crops are the key to feeding a growing world. But here's the real question. Are we debating facts or are we just drowning in misinformation? If we cut through the noise and look at hard evidence, the conversation comes down to three key areas, safety, environmental impact, and yields. And spoiler alert, both sides have their fair share of myths. Safety, scientific consensus or industry spin. You've probably heard the claim, GMOs are unsafe. But here's the truth, major health organizations, including the American Medical Association, say there is no scientific justification for singling out GMOs as harmful. A 2022 review of 1,783 studies found no evidence linking GM foods to unique health risks. But hold on, does that mean the debate is over? Not exactly. Critics argue that the so-called scientific consensus isn't as airtight as it seems. The National Academy of Sciences has pointed out gaps in long-term risk assessments, particularly regarding gene flow, where modified genes spread to wild plants. Organic advocates also raise concerns about pesticide residues. And while organic farms avoid synthetic chemicals, they still use approved natural pesticides like copper sulfate, which can accumulate in soils over time. The bottom line? GMOs themselves aren't inherently dangerous, but that doesn't mean all concerns should be dismissed. Environmental trade-offs. Who's really saving the planet? Here's where things get interesting. Since 1996, GM crops have led to an 8.2% reduction in global pesticide spraying, lowering environmental impacts by nearly 20%. For example, herbicide-tolerant GM soybeans enable no-till farming, which cuts fuel use and helps sequester carbon, equivalent to taking 16.7 million cars off the road every year. Sounds great, right? Well, not so fast. Organic farming, despite its lower yields, boosts biodiversity by 50% and reduces nitrogen runoff by up to 50%. The catch? Organic farms require 84% more land to produce the same amount of food as conventional farms. That's a big problem when we're talking about deforestation and food security. So, who's the real environmental hero here? The answer, as usual, is more complicated than we'd like it to be. Yields and profits. Who's winning the farming game? When it comes to yields, GM crops have a clear edge, especially for staples like corn and soybeans. But does that mean organic farming isn't profitable? Not at all. Organic farmers earn price premiums of 30 to 100% over conventional crops, making small-scale organic farming a viable business model, especially for specialty markets. Meanwhile, in developing nations, drought-resistant GM maize has boosted yields by 25% in arid regions. In India, organic cooperatives report profit margins of 20 to 30% through direct-to-consumer sales. So, which one is better? It depends on what you're growing, where, and for whom. The misinformation war. Who's telling the truth? Misinformation is rampant on both sides of this debate. A 2022 study found that 9% of global media coverage on GMOs contained misinformation, almost always negative. In Africa, 21% of GMO-related news falsely claimed health risks. But let's not pretend biotech companies are saints, either. A 2014 report revealed that some pro-GMO campaigns misrepresented scientific positions, making their safety claims seem more definitive than they actually are. Meanwhile, organic advocates often gloss over the fact that their industry uses pesticides, too just different ones. And they don't always mention that organic farming has its own environmental costs, particularly its higher land use. The reality? Both sides have weaponized half-truths to push their agendas. This doesn't have to be a black and white issue. Instead of pitting organic and GMOs against each other, what if we focused on combining the best of both? Cornell researcher Sarah Davidson Evanega puts it best. GM nitrogen-efficient crops could reduce synthetic fertilizer use by 40%, complementing organic soil health practices. 
Imagine a food system where we use biotech innovations to boost staple crop yields while leveraging organic principles for sustainability and biodiversity. That's a future worth working toward. The truth is, demonizing either side does more harm than good. As climate change accelerates, dismissing GM technology entirely could hurt global food security. But ignoring the benefits of organic methods is equally short-sighted. So next time someone asks, organic or GMO, which is better? The best answer might just be, why not both? <laughs>